Hello guys. I wanted to do a video here on spark gaps. Um, when I was doing my research, it was kind of hard to figure out what people were doing. And I wanted to make a video for the people who are just starting out and no knowledge about the spark gap, the capacitors, the transformer. This one here is a Tesla hairpin replica. So pretty much you got your transformer. It comes out either end, it comes to the spark gap. From the spark gap goes to one side of the capacitor on both sides. And the other side of the capacitors are the dielectric side. And here I got them going to each side of that four foot light bulb and also I have it coming down from either side to this light bulb, regular house light bulb. Um, just to go over a couple quick things, um, on these transformer, the NTS's, um, I guess uh, it's really not that important to know which is positive or negative. Um, on the capacitors, it really doesn't matter which side. Um, also, on the spark gap there, pretty much just have uh, two bolts adjustable. Uh, you know, on this one here, I have a magnet south, magnet north on the bottom. Everything around it's adjustable. As you uh, do some research, you'll see some different response from how you move stuff. Uh, this one here is just my... Uh, I would say experimental one on one level um, as you see as we go on in this video um, the real spark gap you want is something more concealed but has access to let in air and out air at the same time and these are the uprights uh, these capacitors I drilled a hole through the glass you got a brass rod sticking out, bolted. I got a 10 gauge magnetic wire, scraped some sandpaper on it. It comes up and goes to that bolt. So the salt water I have in here um, is in between the center bottle glass and this outside glass. That's one plate. Then inside this bottle here is salt water. And on top I have oil in the bottle center and oil in here and they're all level across and these are high voltage capacitors now something I want to talk to you about um, I just ran a little test run and on my oscilloscope um, showed me that my 60 Hertz coming out of the wall um, I changed the frequency with the spark app and also I increased the horsepower so guys, when you're building your systems, if you're working on a Tesla tower or uh, Edley Scallon wheel, um, I'm definitely going to incorporate the hairpin, the Tesla coil and edge wheel together. Um, that's why I'm doing a lot of Tesla research right now. But um, when you uh, come out of the hairpin, uh, it's taking a voltage and multiplying it and it's multiplying it so much that um, it's this is sort of like a dynamo right here for a car engine and I can guarantee you that this is a fast ass engine right here this is uh, 15,000 volts 30 milliamps um, I got earth ground connected over here at the bottom to my grounding pipe over there. Um, I just got the light in the back just to burn up some energy. What this really is doing, it's putting out 15,000 volts. It's running to the gap. It's running to the capacitors. The capacitors are finding residence within each other through the gap and it's pretty much self-resonating itself and I just had this up to a million and two frequency 
with over 700,000 volts. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but that's the numbers that were coming up on here when you start this up and it's, it's amazing. Uh, you have to use up this energy because you'll burn stuff out, but these capacitors are made um, for, for high voltage. So um, I guess what we'll do guys here, when you're making your spark app, just for starters, um, make sure you start off with uh, something that's gonna put out good power. Um, if you're going into the MOTS, just be careful. Um, they're a little radical. Uh, they do the job, but they'll hurt you, kill you. This here will hurt you, but most likely it won't kill you unless you grab both sides. But when you're messing with stuff like this for anybody, just make sure uh, you don't have to touch anything. You really don't. I know somebody, so we're all making videos and we're touching stuff and uh, showing off a little bit, but um, nah, I don't know. It's cool and stuff, but. All right, so here, so basically what you got here, Tesla hairpin, uh, you got a spark app in here. Uh, the object here I'm going to show you guys is we're going to blow um, a shop vac vacuum on the um, spark app. We're going to turn this spark app. You'll see it as I plug it in. And then you'll see it as I bring up the hose. I'm going to put the hose back here about two and a half feet away. And uh, actually I'll go back like four or five feet back here and I'm gonna you'll see a difference in the um, spark app and just because the spark app is getting radical and and going like medieval um, that's not really what I'm focusing on as this being a car engine I am really focusing on the horsepower that it's driving so with that being said um, I know it's not really good to be messing around with expensive oscilloscopes, um, especially uh, with high voltage like this. So I'm just going to do a little quick pick. It'll record briefly what is going on, and uh, we'll see if we can capture some of the rises on it. And it does put out a square wave. Here you can see the top of the waves on here um, we're looking at 59 Hertz well actually this here is 59,000 Hertz um, frequency 60,000 nah, just 60 Hertz but uh, we'll go ahead and let's fire this up and let's take a look at it uh, then I'm gonna turn it off I'm not gonna talk during it you ain't gonna hear me uh, then we're going to go ahead and put uh, this on here and we're going to shunt it pretty much we're just going to uh, uh, put that shunt across the back there and we're going to uh, pretty much just ground it out and uh, I want you to see the difference and pretty much the max this dynamo this engine can do uh, you'll see when I put the shunt on it it get really more horsepower out of it versus what you're about to see so anyway all right guys let's, uh, let's uh, fire this sucker up plug it in you can see four foot light bulb flickering you can see my regular light bulb flickering turn on my
So that's radicalness on the spark gap. And you can see how the air affected it. It definitely up um, four feet away from it, five, actually six feet away from it. And you can see what it did to it. So right now we're gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and try putting the stunt on it, the shunt. And pretty much now we're got the two sides of the dielectric side now connected with this is a positive capacitor, this is a negative capacitor. So let's go ahead and I'll get this thing started. You're gonna hear it louder, crisper, and you're gonna see a lot more action. You ready? You see the light bulb get light. I gotta say is NASCAR guys yep that's uh, it's my new engine this is my dynamo I think that thing I'm lucky it didn't blow up it's got a lot of data on it though I'll pull it off but um, all right so you guys just be careful out there I got some new videos coming out well get this thing tuned in we'll hook this up to the Tesla coil still have another hmm, got this tower over there that aluminum it's gonna sit on top of that with a top load so I don't have the room in here so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and put it outside but um, I'm gonna take the bottom of that and bring it all the way up to a little bit above the center there and we're going to put a through rod there and make that adjustable so I can lift up the secondary or bring it down. We'll send the energy in from the outside here. Uh, race car engine's looking pretty good. And then ultimately, I'm bringing this over here over to my buddy Ed Lee Scallon. And I guess where we're going to start off, uh, I guess what I'll do with this to calm it down a little bit. I'll unplug the AC, I'll take two 12 volt batteries, go into a 555 that I have here, and then we'll bring that into this uh, transformer. We'll keep the engine set up the same. We'll take that for a test run and see what we get out of it. And then I like to incorporate that over here and allow um, Ed's wheel to each one of these uh, magnetically into a, a reed switch uh, be that on and off so uh, over here won't be the 555 it'll be a reed switch so when this turns it'll give that its pulse and uh, initially it will take the juice out of the two capacitors here it'll go into the um, PMH is here and they will drive the wheel to keep it turning and they also will require less energy because if you go back into the hairpin what you really have here is you're taking whatever volts from your transformer and you're multiplying it because you're oscillating the transformer beyond its capabilities so it's taking a circuit like this that's able to multiply it, store it, and flush it out real quick. That's why on a